was clear. We told them what we wanted. We told them what we needed. And the non-Americans, the people from the indirect societies, these Americans are so rude. They're so uneducated. They communicate too direct, like children. Yeah. Because that's not children. So the opposite is the indirect communication. And this is a this is a satellite uh, radar dish, yeah? Because people from these indirect communication societies, and if you're from Latin America, this is your culture. Yes. If you're from the Middle East, this is your culture. If you're Asian, this is your culture. Again, it's the Western North Atlantic cultures that are so direct. But Middle Eastern people, Latinos, Asians, we have a radar. Yeah? We have a radar. And so we are scanning people. Yeah. We're scanning people all the time. We cannot turn it off. It's always on. Yeah? So you're scanning and you're looking for hidden messages, hidden meanings. You're looking for unstated messages. People from these cultures, they're communicating very much, but they're not using their mouth. They're using many other nonverbal signals. Now, Here's the problem. Let's go ahead and see the flags. So, again, as I said, Latin America, Middle East, Asia, all over here. The direct communicators, the Western North Atlantic countries, Canada, U.S., Britain. You could even say Northern Europe and Southern Europe. Now, here's the problem. If you come from this culture, you think these people are rude. They're uneducated. They're unsophisticated. If you come from this culture, you think those people waste time. They're unreliable. They're complicated. They say things they don't mean. They can't make a decision. Yeah, you see, so we both, we both judge the other. And I think you can see how this applies for each of you. But again, just for an example, look, two countries side by side that share a 2,000 miles border, Mexico and the US, and so different. And we have so many people here in Texas working with Mexicans that have no idea about this very simple rule. This is a very simple thing. I think this should be taught in every public school and every hospital in town. And it would really help to, to build a bridge. A bridge of understanding. So, um, but I think they might find the next list interesting. So again, these are the very direct and very indirect. So up here, right, look, Russian, Indian, Arab, Chinese, you don't need to say anything. And sometimes with a look, you can say so many things. And this really works, you know. I have to tell you a bad thing I did once. I was working in Spain one summer. And at the end of three months, I was coming home in September. And there was a young lady in our group. Her name was Pilar. And she was nice. I was single. And one of the last days, we're getting on the bus, we're going somewhere. It was a team. We're traveling all around the south of Spain. And we're getting on the bus, and she's in front of me. We're all climbing on the bus, and she climbs up, and then turns around to look at me, and I just looked at her. I didn't say anything, but I made just a little, I made a smile with my eyes. Yeah? Not with my mouth. With my eyes, I made a smile. And, and she turned around, and she went, she was like, I got it. You know? She saw the smile in my eyes, and she didn't say anything either. And then the next week, I'm back in Texas. And every week, I'm getting a letter from Bilal. You know? No words, OK? You know, you that are Latinos, that are from the Middle East, that are from Asia, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We communicate without words. 
the poor Americans and the Germans, they are blind. Yeah? They cannot, they don't have the radar, okay? So they cannot perceive the communication. This is, this is important, this is valuable information. Yes, sir. Uh, is, do you think things are changing because of technology? No, I think they're changing because of technology, sure. I think we can turn the lights on, and uh, I think we're finished with the slides. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. That's a very good question. Yeah, because more yes. data can come from institutions of family, the sharing the school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, let, let me say this. Our work lately, in the last few years, we have been more in Latin America than in Europe. But uh, actually, our work in Latin America has been for Nokia, which is a Finnish company. What we're finding... The young people, and by young people I mean yeah. it, it work, the young people in the workforce, right? Young people 30, 30 to 40, this age. Yeah? They're wired, they're connected, they have, you know, iPhones and Blackberries and Nokia super phones, and they're, they are completely in communication. They're on the internet, they're on Twitter. They're, you, you, we know now that even in Iran, the young people are on Twitter. So there's this internet connectedness. I'm not sure how much that changes the deep values. I think even for a connected 35-year-old Asian professional, that I suspect a saving face is probably just as powerful for that person as for their grandfather. Th that's what I suspect. What now, the are they more global? Yes. Sorry, what? What about the 17 year old? The 17 year old. I don't work with them. <laughs> I, I have one. I have one. But she's American. You know? I, I, we, we have seen the communication get more rapid. It's, yeah. it's, it's shorter. Um, it, people are communicating by text a lot, just like we are. So the, you're communicating only what you need to communicate and nothing more. So so there's less formality, in a way, between those those younger professionals. I, like Edward said, I don't know how how much it's turning the big ship. Let, let, me, let me say this, there, because there's a, there are a lot of popular books. And uh, who's, who's this guy that wrote The World is Flat? Friedman. Friedman. Tom Friedman. Have you heard of that? Tom Friedman. The World is Flat. And, and I completely disagree with this book. Because his... His, his book, The World is Fight, is very popular. And everyone, five years ago, everybody was reading this book. You know? In business school, in college, even in the military. We teach courses for the military, and they were recommending this book. The, the argument of Thomas Friedman's book, The World is Flat, it's about the global supply chain. Okay, So how do we make a projector? You know, we get plastic from Singapore, we get wire from Mexico, and, you know, we get a lens from Korea. With the software from California. It's about the supply chain, but his thesis is that is convergence. Is because of business, we're all coming closer together, right? And I, I really don't see that. I, I, in fact, when we were talking about Europe earlier, I think a lot of in a lot of places in the world right now, people are putting up more walls, yeah. and they're wanting to be more. You know, oh, what does it mean to be French? Well, we don't want the Moroccans to be French is, you know, no face veil, you know. There, there, there's like more nationalism now than I think in the 